Hello and welcome. In our journey towards making effective models, we'll always come across a scenario where we'll have to choose amongst the features that have been given to us to explain an outcome. And that's called feature selection. Because not all the features provided to us are always meaningful. We have to find out the ones which are most important and retain them in our models. Thankfully for this purpose, scikit-learn, the most famous library in machine learning, comes very handy. It has a specific module called feature selection and that's what we'll be learning about today. If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Also, after watching this video, you may want to refer to some of the playlists that we have created for people who are interested in in-depth knowledge. These are the videos in the right sequence, which will give you thorough knowledge of the subject. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So let's first understand what is feature selection. Feature selection is the process of choosing a subset of essential features from a larger set in our data set. The goal is to improve the model performance, reduce overfitting, and enhance interpretability by focusing on the most informative variables. These methods involve selecting relevant features while discarding the irrelevant or redundant ones. So what all techniques are we going to cover under feature selection? Let's go through these one by one. What are the popular approaches for feature selection? First is variance threshold. Next, we'll talk about the select K best, then the recursive feature elimination, followed by select from model, and finally, sequential feature selector. There are other approaches as well. For example, there are approaches based on correlations. We can eliminate features based on Pearson's correlation, variance inflation factor, or we can transform the entire feature space using principal component analysis. Now, these are the approaches that we've covered at length in our earlier videos. So if I take you to our YouTube channel, you can go to the playlist section and you will find a lot of informative playlists. I'm talking about two specific playlists versus EDA and data preparation. If you click on this, it takes you to this playlist and it shows you videos with theory and hands-on piece on multicollinearity. This is a very effective technique for feature selection and you may want to watch these videos. And if you're interested in learning about principal component analysis, you can go to this playlist, which is called Unsupervised Machine Learning Playlist. And it has four detailed videos on principal component analysis covering the theory to the hands-on and interpretation from scratch. So you may utilize these videos for the additional techniques. However, in the current video, we're going to talk about these five techniques which are readily available through scikit-learn's feature selection module. Let's get started. So let's understand what's the importance of variance of a feature when we talk about predictive tasks. Let's say we're trying to solve a regression problem. We are trying to predict the income using the work experience. On the left, we have a plot where the work experience or the independent feature varies. It attains values, anything greater than zero to maybe 14 years of experience. Somebody who's a fresher to up to maybe 14 years of experience. And accordingly, you see the income also varies more in a positive pattern. So in general, we can say as the work experience increases, the income seems to be increasing. But on the right, we have another plot where the independent feature or the work experience is constant. It does not vary. Everybody seems to have same work experience. So in this case, do you think work experience can be a good predictor of income? Because for everybody, work experience is one and the same till the income is varying. So we can't say that income is varying because of a variation in the work experience, because work experience here is constant. Obviously, income seems to be varying because of some other factor. So if a feature is constant, it generally doesn't play a very important role in predicting an outcome. This was the scenario where we took the independent feature as a numerical variable and also the outcome as a numerical variable. But let's just take another example where the independent feature is categorical and the dependent feature or the target is numerical. So we're trying to understand the difference in the income depending on the educational qualification. Let's say for a given company, there are two kinds of profiles. There are tech profiles and non-tech profiles. When you look at this plot on the left, what can you say about the income with respect to the educational background? If you pay attention, you'd see the tech profile people seem to have a median income, which is higher than the non-tech profile. So this kind of indicates a difference. It suggests that it does make a difference as to what the educational background is. If it's technical, it seems these people are paid relatively better compared to the non-tech profiles for a given organization. This is a hypothetical scenario. But let's look at the plot on the right. What can we say about this? For this organization, is there a difference between the technical and non-technical profiles? The answer is no, because their medians are nearly overlapping. You don't see a significant influence of the educational background on the income, at least for this organization. So once again, in which case do you think educational background has an important role to play? Well, in this case, the case on the left, why? Because here you see a difference in the outcome depending on the choice of educational background. 
The case on the right says, irrespective of the educational background, the outcome doesn't change. So the variance threshold works on the logic that if the independent variable shows a constant behavior against the target, then it is not a good independent variable. It may be eliminated. So to put it together, variance threshold identifies and removes features with low variance. It operates under the assumption that features with very little variation in their values across samples are less informative for predictive modeling tasks. Once the threshold is set, any feature with a variance below this threshold is considered low variance and is therefore removed. We'll see this when we do the hands-on. Let's move to the next approach, which is known as select K best. Select K best selects top K. K is the number. So top K features based on univariate statistical tests. It operates on the assumption that each feature is independent and is evaluated separately. The selection is determined by ranking the features according to their scores from a specified statistical test and then top K features are chosen. Let's understand this. So let's say we are trying to predict the sales or revenue generated by a company based on their ad spends. These days, every company focuses on digital marketing and they try to reach out to their prospects through different channels. Some through Google ads, some through meta ads, some through print media, some could be through other platforms. So this is kind of a linear regression equation that you see that you're trying to predict sales using the spends on each of these categories. And there's a constant term also that we have in this equation, which is represented by this epsilon. So now let's take this equation and try to find out if we want to zero down to two categories of spends only. We don't want to be spending in four different categories. We want to reduce it to two. Can we find out the two most effective channels that we should be continuing to invest on? This is the same equation that you saw in the previous one. In order to do this, we have to take every single feature, let's say Google ad spend, and we have to check how strongly does it explain sales. Then we have to take the meta ad spend and see how strongly does it explain sales. So there would be scoring functions for each independent variable and dependent variable combination. Using that scoring function, we'll be able to find out a ranking. Now, the ones which get the best ranks will be the ones that will be shortlisted. Thankfully, all of this is done by the algorithm. We just have to give the appropriate input. So how does it work? We're going to calculate the independent statistical test for each feature. So to make it easier for you as to how we decide the right scoring function, here is a quick summary table. Let's say a target column is numerical, which is like sales, and the independent variable is also numerical, which is, let's say, the spend amount, Google ad spend, meta ad spend, these are dollar values. So it will again be treated as numerical. In that case, the scoring function is F regression, which works on the logic of simple linear regression. If the target column is numerical like this, but the independent variable is categorical, let's say we are talking about three different geographies. So these are categories. And now if you're trying to see whether this geography thing associates with the sales or not, the scoring function is F classif, which essentially uses a no one side. If your dependent variable is categorical, you're solving a classification problem and the independent variable is numerical. So you're trying to solve, let's say for a default or non-default and the feature that you're using to explain that is credit score. Then you use something called as mutual info classif. It works on the logic of mutual information. And if both the variables are categorical, you're trying to predict defaults, but you have some kind of a category, which could be, let's say the educational qualification of the person, which is a category. And the outcome is also a default, non-default status both variables are categorical, then you can perform a chi-square test of independence or dependence. So this is a quick summary to help you choose the right scoring function. In case of select k-best, you check how every single variable is associated with the target based on some logic. Now, if you have a mix of variables, some variables are categorical and some variables are numerical, you can segregate the variables by their nature and apply the appropriate scoring function. You can take all variables of the same nature at a time and it'll come up with a ranking on those features and help you find out the features that you want to retain. Next is recursive feature elimination. And as the name goes, it involves eliminating the features recursively. So this is an approach where you take a model, let's say a logistic regression model or a decision tree, any of the models, and you fit that model using all the independent features. Let's say we had 10 features, but we wanted only three features finally. So we'll mention that we finally want to have three features. It'll create a model with all 10 features, then recursively, based on a step size, let's say we choose one, it'll keep on dropping one variable at a time until it reaches just three features. And these will be the three most important features based on feature importance or coefficients. We'll show this again to you in the hands-on piece. And next is select from model. So select from model selects features based on the importance or coefficients assigned to them by an external model. It again uses a model like recursive feature elimination, but it does not drop the features recursively. 
It creates a model using the features as provided and provides a convenient way to perform feature selection by leveraging the intrinsic feature importance information provided by certain models. The difference lies in the fact that it uses a threshold. So any feature with its importance or coefficients less than the threshold is dropped. What was happening in case of recursive feature elimination is that we were creating a model and we're dropping features one at a time. But in case of select from model, we are creating an overall model and then based on the threshold, we are dropping whatever be the number of features less than the threshold all at once, not recursively. Finally, we're going to talk about sequential feature selector. Sequential feature selector again builds or removes the features based on the performance of a selected machine learning model. So all these are supervised approaches. They're using some or the other model to decide what are the features to keep. This process involves selecting or excluding features at each iteration, evaluating the model's performance and determining the best subset of features. So to give you an example, let's say we're trying to predict the same sales value or the revenue using the ad spends. So let's say we've taken a couple of features like Google ad spends, meta ad spends, and other spends. Now, how is it going to build the model? It's going to take one feature at a time. It will try to first explain sales with one feature taken alone. So it will try to first explain sales with respect to just the Google ad spends, then the meta ad spends, then the other spends, and whichever of the three gives the best result based on a model performance measure, it's going to keep that feature. So let's say it's meta ad spends. It'll come up with an equation like this. So sales being predicted with the help of meta ad spends alone because amongst the other choices that we gave as an input, only the meta ad spend piece seemed to be best associated with sales. But if you have other choices left and you have to take one more feature, then it's going to compare between those two features. Now the remaining features will be added one at a time to this equation that we just got to find out the next best feature. And let's say that turns out to be Google ad spend, then you will update your sales equation like this. So this is kind of building a model, taking one feature at a time. So it can work forward or it can work backwards. We can keep on adding more features and we can decide how many features we want and stop at that point. So the stopping criterion here would be how many features do you want? Let's say we wanted only two features and we had maybe a number of choices like five, 10 or 15. The moment we reach two best features, we'll stop our model. So we discussed an example of forward sequential feature selection. If we talk about backward sequential feature selection, it has a lot of similarities with the recursive feature elimination because you'll be creating a model with all the features and then you'll be dropping features. But there is a fundamental difference between the two approaches. The backward sequential feature selection focuses on eliminating the features that minimally impact the model performance. Whereas the recursive feature elimination performs a feature ranking based on their importance or coefficients, and it removes the least important ones. Next, we'll move to the hands-on piece and we'll see all of these approaches in action.